What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. Hooray, and up she rises. Hooray, and up she rises. Hooray, and up she rises. Early in the morning. is the island of Boonsy, stark, forbidding, lonely, and almost 55 and a half miles from Portsmouth. For five years now, this remote and desolate island has been home sweet home to officers and men of Her Majesty's ship Compton, an inshore minesweeper, and uh, a wren or two, as rugged and resolute a little band as you'll meet in a day's march. This is Commander Stanton, a tough, fearless old sea dog, eyes ever alert for the slightest tremor on the now still waters. Last. Another essential job for a minesweeper patrol is underwater reconnaissance. Here we see Lieutenant Powder, our dashing number one, at his duties. I'm most rightfully sorry. I was looking for mackerel. I had no idea I'd find anything quite like this. You peeping Tom, you knew I was bathing here. I do assure you, I, I, Heather, I didn't. I do now, of course, but uh, uh, that is, I mean... Um, go away, I want to get out. Well, do, I'd, I'd be delighted. Uh, no, 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 you mustn't. I'll uh, teach no. you to go sneaking up on people with your snorkel. Uh, no, Heather, please. Please, Heather, uh, that's for mackerel. Uh, no, Heather. I don't care. Uh, Heather, no! This picturesque spot is known locally as Smuggler's Cove and, as its name implies, was once used by French smugglers in the illicit wine trade. And, for all we know, it still is. Ah, Shifi! <laughs> ah, Gaston, what have you got there? Ah, something special for you. Champagne! Aha! Uh -huh. Chateau Fountain, Blue? How much? Oh, seven and six a bottle, huh? Make it a dollar. Oh, uh, you will get 15 shillings at Pompey, Chief. Now, look, I got the trouble of getting it there, ain't I? Five bob, and I'll take two dozen cases. Uh, after I've tasted it. It's a deal. Well, don't sit there like a midwife at the funeral. Make yourself useful, son. Go on. Cart that case back to the store. Aye, aye, Chiefy. Well, jump to it, then. I'm jumping to it, then. Oh, he used to stump his. I'm not kidding, <laughs> Gaston. Come on, mate. Au revoir, Chiffy. Au revoir, Gaston. <laughs> but above all, the Navy's vigilance must never cease. Day and night, keen eyes, ever watchful, are scanning the seas for any possible threat from the enemy. Shall I stick my head and tell them we're coming, sir? Certainly not. This is a surprise visit, Bates. You must know by now that I have dedicated my service years to winkling out useless and redundant units of the Royal Navy. 
And I have a shrewd suspicion that number 2723 inshore minesweeping squadron, stationed on Boonsie Island, will be the next on my list. Oh, uh, quite so, sir. <laughs> Last! Last! What's all that damn racket about? Launch a high, sir! Heading this way, sir! Tell me! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> Johnson, get us a glass. Oh, oh, here it is, Chippy. <laughs> That's only like a good one. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, not bad. <laughs> hey, that can mean only one thing. Captain Povey's coming for inspection. Come on, get this stuff out of sight. Look, when you've done that, do all the other chores right. you do on these occasions. <laughs> right. What's the matter? Come on. <laughs> what are you up to now? I'm stuck. Stuck? Why don't you use the door? Go on and get cracking. Inspection at a time like this. But Heather, you don't understand. It was just a simple error of navigation. Huh. I mean, how was I to know you were going to be bathing there? In exactly the same way that you knew that I'd be in Smuggler's Cove yesterday, Dingley Point the day before, and in Farthing Creeks the day before that. That's why you can't settle in one place. I really don't know. I had to swim miles before I found you. Oh. Oh, Lord. Coming. Oh, darling, what? look at you. Who's taking my stripes? Well, it's about time somebody did. What? Oh, I see. Yes. <laughs> Coming, sir. Quickly. I am being quick. I should be in trouble again. It's all your fault. Right. You buzzed, sir? Yes, Mr. Potter, I buzzed. Many a time and oft have I buzzed. I was trying to find a tune that you liked. Well, sir, I'm rather partial to the one that goes ta ra ra buzz dear and uh, you buzzed, sir. Yes, Mr. Powder. We're ready for inspection. Are we? Oh, good. I was asking you, Mr. Powder, not telling you. Well, that's a novelty for a start, sir. Well, I mean, yes, sir. I think we are, sir. Well, if Captain Pope is aboard that launch, we'd better be. Quite, sir. Old Thunderguts doesn't miss much. Correction, Mr. Powder. Old Thunderguts doesn't miss anything. Well, just to be on the safe side, I think I'll go over to the stores and make sure that Chief Petty Officer Banyard has heard the warning. Oh, what a good idea, sir. My ideas usually are, Mr. Potter. Of course, sir. Don't tell a chap, will you? Drake's sake, hurry up, Johnson. Aye, aye, Chiefy. Here you are. Here's another one. Thanks. Well, there we are, Chiefy. 65 blankets, all present and correct. All right, you cut back over to the park. Make sure the milkman's brought our jeep back. Oh, but he hasn't delivered here yet, Chiefy. Well, I should hope not with thunder guns about. Go on, on your way laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Miss my vacation, that's what I done. I beg leave to doubt that. Oh, I wish you wouldn't do that, sir. It's only on very rare occasions that I have the... I had the chance, Coxon. Sir? Usually these stores are so well locked that it takes 14 men and a battering ram to get in at all. <laughs> Everything's in order, sir. Yes, it would need to be. We don't want any repetition of the little uh, novelties that appeared during Captain Povey's last inspection. No, sir. A three-ton truck containing a rather elderly upright piano, for instance, that had been rushed here in the middle of a little private light removal work. Well, I had a complete and thorough explanation at the uh, time. Please don't bother me with that again. I didn't believe it then either. Ingenious though it was. That'll be all, Cox. Sir. I don't know what you were up to, and I most certainly didn't want to know. But I did want to make sure that you had put back at once whatever it was. I see. Sir. All right, Chiefy. The milkman's brought the jeep. Well, oh, Trump. <laughs> don't take any notice of him, sir. He comes from Glasgow. It's a son. He can't take it, sir. Coxon. 
Yes, sir. I expect you to report at the jetty at once to Pipe Captain Povia Shaw. Aye, aye, sir. Pipe. Bosun's pipe. Have you seen the pipe? Have you seen the bosun's pipe? Go on, get that pipe! Board, sir. We're delighted to see you. That I doubt, particularly when you hear the purpose of my visit. Oh, well, uh, perhaps you'd care to come along to my office and we'll uh, discuss it over a glass of sherry. I never touch alcohol before sundown, Commander Stanton. Oh, well, uh, a mug of cocoa, perhaps. What's that? Uh well, looks like a fishing rod to me, sir. It looks like a fishing rod to me, too. Number one? Uh, not guilty. I mean, sir. Dismiss the men and follow Captain Povey and myself to my office? Oh, I'd rather not, sir. I mean, aye, aye, sir. Well, gentlemen. As I understand it, the principal purpose of your presence here is to minesweep the surrounding area. That is correct, sir. We're sweeping them up all the time. Hundreds of the blighters. Now, that's very odd. Odd, sir? In what way? Because I've been making a study of some relevant German war records, and according to them, they didn't lay one single solitary mine within a hundred miles of this island. Well, they should have done. I mean, they must have done, sir. Why, we're fishing them up all the time. Thousands of the wretched things with, with great spikes on them. I see. Well, since I'm here, I shall be able to observe you bagging 50 or 60 for myself. Well, what do you want with all of those, sir? Uh, uh, you will, sir. Yes, sir, I will, sir. When's your next sweep? Hmm? Oh, I, well, I'm not quite sure. It's, um... <laughs> uh, next sweep, sir? Well, I think we've got one on the Derby, first prize bottle of sherry. Uh, uh, more, more, um, cocoa, sir? I think we could lay on everything for this afternoon, sir. At a pinch. Everything, Coxon? Yes, sir. If Compton steams round by, um... Smuggler's Cove, sir. I think we might be lucky and pick up something, sir. Huh. Well, that's more like it. <laughs> yes, much more like it, yes. Well, um, oh, off you go, uh, Coxon, and make all the necessary preparations, will you? It'll be a pleasure, sir. Come on, we got work to do! Go on, get cracking. We've got a date with Bessie! <laughs> come on, come on, turn it up, come on. Oi, get down, Charlie boy. Oi. Bessie's got some work to do. Do you mind? <laughs> Stand down a bit. A bit more. Now straighten her up. Yes. Now right hand down a bit. Yes, on the other lock. Oh, come on, Coxon, you've got bags of room. Where did you learn navigation, Mr. Powder? On the Great West Road? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Actually, I was at Dartmouth. I shall never know how you got through Dartmouth. Oh, quite simple, sir. You turn left at Lime Regis. Before we've launched, Bessie. Are you sure you wouldn't like to roll for a wee bit, Swain? You're right, I wouldn't. 
Look here, Stanton, how much longer before we find one of these mines this channel is supposed to be thick with? Well, it shouldn't be long now, sir. Look, uh, you see that spur of rock just ahead, sir? I shouldn't be at all surprised if we don't spot one of the blighters just around the point. What makes you think that? Oh, just a feeling I have, you know. <laughs> I'm rather magnetic about mines, you know. All right, all right, this'll do. Oh. There we are. That's it, all right. <laughs> Go on, Bessie, darling. Have a nice swim. Daddy will see you later. Fine sighted, sir. Green 4 0, sir. It's a mine, all right. Pull ahead, both coxswain. Johnson, bring the walkie-talkie. I'll bring you something someday, old stinker. Aye, aye, Chiefy. Oh. <laughs> Clumsy. I, I tripped. Did you now? I thought you were practicing your belly dance. Now go on out there. And tell me when Compton's picked up Bessie. Aye, Get aye, your shades on. Here. Oh, thanks, Chiefy. Go on, flutter off. Oh. Right. Right. Whoa. Good show, chaps. I'll go and get my toolkit, sir. All right, in, boys. Look here, Stanton. I don't wish to interfere, but wouldn't it be better to cast off and explode the thing in the sea? Right. Oh, no, sir. We couldn't do that. Why not? Bird sanctuary, you know. Bird sanctuary? Yes. Yeah. The people of Boonsy would never forgive us. The mating season. For the birds, that is. No, we'll disarm her here. Isn't that uh, rather dangerous? Mm. Yes. Yes, I suppose it is. I hadn't thought about it much. Right, easy lads now. Easy does it. Here! Here's a picked up Bessie, Chiefy! Blimey, about time too. <coughs> what are you talking about picked up Bessie? How could they have done when she's bobbing about there in the water? Uh, well, they picked up something, I saw them. Dah, give me those. Stone the seagulls, they have picked up something. It's another mine. Now, where did that one come from? Here, do, do you think it might be a real live one, Chiefy, eh? Unless somebody else has lost their lifeboat fund collecting box, that's exactly what it is. Huh. Aye? Hello, hello, hello. Calling Compton. Calling Compton. Compton calling Compton. Compton, are you receiving me? Over. You heavy-footed clot, you bastard. Now what are you going to do? They're going to blow themselves sky high. Right, here we are, sir. All ready for the old dismantling. All right, carry on, number one. Aye, aye, sir. Just a minute. What are you going to do with those? What, these? Well, undo the old spikes. Pull its fangs, as it were, sir. <laughs> well, here goes. Hold that, will you? Right. Now. Don't you worry, old chap. This won't hurt a bit. Come on, come on. This is a matter of life and death. Right, ready, Chiefy. Right. Now send this. Mine you've got aboard. Not Bessie. Get rid of it. What's the matter now? I can't remember the alphabet. Do you useless lump? I suppose I've got to do it myself as usual. Give it to me. Now look what you've done. I can't remember it either. Come on. Oh, here. Here, I think it's what can she do. Give it to me. Give it to me quick. 
Hello, 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 Compton? Hello, Jack. Jack, this is urgent. The mine you got aboard is not Bessie. Understand it is not Bessie. Get rid of it! Oh, whoops, it is. For heaven's sake, stop him, Stanton. He'll blow it all up. Oh, not to worry, sir. This is just routine to us mine-sweeping chaps. This sort of thing happens every day. Signal from Chief Petty Officer Banyard, sir. It's urgent. Oh, all right. Excuse me, sir. Something wrong? Wrong? No, no, no. Nothing wrong. Don't you worry, sir. I'll get it this time. If it kills me. Uh, yes, quite. On second thoughts, number one, I'm inclined to agree with the uh, Captain Povey. I think we ought to put it back. Oh, what a... Yes, well, um, put it back, that's all. What a pity, sir. I've just been in to enjoy myself. Mr. Powter, I gave an order. Oh. This is not Bessie. Well, in that case, I don't see why I should... Oh. Oh, lummy. Sir, I think I'm going to be sick. Do you think we got them in time, Chiefy? You'll soon know, Johnson. If you should happen to hear a loud bang, you will know that all that is left of 2723 is you, me, and the station cat. All clear, sir. Uh, pull the head together, Coxon, and the sooner the better. Pull the head together, sir, and the sooner the better. Now look here, Stanton. There's something going on in this ship that just doesn't smell right. I don't know what game you think you're playing, but let me warn you, if... Minesweeper's Admiralty. Repeated CNC Portsmouth. If there are any mines in that channel, we need something better than that bunch of left handed, know nothing, bumbling, half witted, incompetent idiots to deal with it. Left handed, half witted, bungling idiots. What are you doing, Mabel? I haven't started yet. Oh? Uh, advise paying off and closing down of inshore minesweeping establishment, Boonsey Island, now. Redundant. Officers appear suitable for in service. Have that sent right away. I'll have them out of that cosy little billet. You see if I don't. But Mabel, I told you to get this chair fixed. Aye, aye, sir. Morning, Hella. Good morning, Lieutenant Powder. At least it was. Uh, anything for me? Only one. It's probably from a mermaid's father complaining about a peeping tom. Oh, hardly. I don't know any mermaids who get notice from peeping toms. Uh... Oh, lummy. It's a mummy. Uh, I, I, I mean, mother. The signal's just coming from Captain Povey. Oh, thanks. If you ask me, it's red hot. Yeah, so is this. I say, Heather, hmm? listen to this little lot. What? Dear son. Da 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 Very interesting. What nationality is your mother? Well, oh, she's British. Uh, uh, ah, yes, here we are. Uh, we all miss you very much now that the season is underway. Cynthia is quite desolate and refuses to be comforted. She says you have the hottest cha cha she's ever seen and nobody else's will do. Hurry back by the first train. I'm sure the Admiral could let you go if you explained about Cynthia. Regards and all that. Mater. Shall I get you a line to the Admiral? Uh, no fear. I'm staying right here where I'm safe. You may not get the cha-cha chance. Hmm? Have a look at that. What's this? Ah, yes. Da, 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 jump, jump. To Captain Minesweeper Appleton, repeated to Commander-in-Chief Portsmouth, advise paying off and closing down of the inshore minesweeping establishment Boonsey Island, now considered redundant. Officers appear suitable for foreign service. He can't do this. You can't do what, Mr. Powder? Sir, no thunder nut has done his gut. I, I mean, thunder guts has done his, um, his... Well, well, see for yourself, sir. 
Of course, we ought to have tied him to that mine before we slung it overboard. Now, couldn't you put that in your not-received files, sir? Not this time, Mr. Powder. You can't not receive a payoff order. Anything else but not that. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. Hi. Well, whatever it is that's upset you, sir, I've got three witnesses to prove that I wasn't anywhere near what it was when whatever it was happened, sir. Hmm. What about your not-received files, sir? Let's face the fact, gentlemen. We've been rumbled. But, sir, I, I simply can't go back to the mainland. Well, it looks as if you'll have to, sir. Cynthia will be pleased. Oh, heaven. Might I make a suggestion, sir? Mm hmm? In order to give us a little time, sir, I would suggest that we give Captain Povey the Poulson's Fulminator Mark III treatment, sir. The Poulson's how many? Yes, by, by all means, Chief. Sounds most enterprising. Well, as a matter of fact, sir, this uh, ploy was used by a relative of mine with great success, sir. What exactly is a Poulson's Fulminator Mark III? <laughs> well, that's just the point, sir. Nobody knows what it is, sir. We haven't got one, have we? No, sir, but I shouldn't worry about trivialities. Have you got a pad, Heather? Mm. Yes. With your permission, sir, I'd uh, like to send a sig signal for your approval. Yes, by all means, Chief. I'm, I'm all agog with suspense. <laughs> yes, that must be very painful, sir. Heather, something like this. Paying off, order received. This establishment will close immediately on orders received for alternative accommodation for one Poulson's Fulminator Mark III. Alternative accommodation for one Poulson's Fulminator Mark III. Take this down, will you? Propose the following be circulated to all departments. Alternative accommodation must be found immediately for one Poulson's Fulminator. Mark III. Any suggestions should be made on form 35C stroke 81 stroke B and forwarded to the officer in charge of the operations. The Poulson's Fulminator Mark III, while being perfectly serviceable, is, in my opinion, too large to be disposed of in the way suggested by Commander Baxter in his minute dated 24th of July, 1959. I say, Clive, there seems to be a good deal of confusion about this Poulson's Fulminator Mark III. Oh, one chap here suggests that we tow it up to Salisbury Plain and blow it up. Surely that's the war office's pigeon, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Take a memo. With reference to the Poulson's Fulminator Mark III, although there is some evidence that it was in service in the Middle East in 1954, I cannot but feel that the whole matter is fraught with difficulty. <laughs> Corporal, put all this bump together and take it over to the Admiralty. Yes. Ah, Bates, yes. Tell me, Bates. What would you say if I were to tell you that I'm about to recommend to their lordships that you take over my job here in Portsmouth? Why, I'd say thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, but... No worry about me, Bates. It's not official, of course, but I have a feeling I'm going to be appointed to the Admiralty quite soon. Oh, congratulations, sir. Thank you, Bates. Now, after all, why not? My work here is done. Look at the map, Bates. Clean as a whistle. Not a redundant unit as far as the eye can see. No, sir. Ah, it's a good feeling, Bates. The feeling of a hard job, well done. What the is it? It's come down from Admiralty, sir. It's addressed to you, sir. Oh, very well, carry on.
house by going to Boonzi. Boonzi, sir? You heard what I said, Boonzi! Sir. I'll teach him to play fast and loose for the future real admiral. Two, 23, 24, 25. And the rest when you deliver the stuff on Tuesday, okay? From what I've heard, I don't think you'll be here Tuesday. <laughs> don't you worry about that, Mr. Higgins. Thanks to Paulson's Fulminator Mark III. Pardon? You heard. We're going to be here forever. <laughs> What's all the noise about? Captain Minesweeper's launch heading this way, sir. Oh, blast! <laughs> Pompey launch sighted up the crow's nest, sir. And that is Lord Fulhold Crows heading this way, sir. Yes, well, well, I'll simmer down, number one, simmer down, or you'll do yourself a mischief. W what do we do now, sir? Our carefully calculated nuts, Mr. Powder. Come in. Pompey launch sighted, sir. Yes, Scramble eggs aboard. We know, Coxon, we know. Have you any suggestions? I'm afraid not, sir. Oh, unless... Yes? Yes. Uh, well, we could try plan B, sir. Plan B. <laughs> That's a bit desperate, isn't it? Well, these are desperate times, sir. All I can say is, if Plan B is all we've got, we might as well scrub it and give up. Aren't you forgetting something, sir? Plan B is Commander Stanton's idea, sir. Well, if it's no good, what does it matter whose idea it is? Oh, oh, excellent idea, sir. Actually, first class. Oh, Plan B it is, sir. Uh, congratulations. Thank you, Pouter. What's that signal they're flying, Bates? I'm not quite sure, sir. It seems most peculiar. Damn it, man, you can read the signal, can't you? Well, yes, sir, but... Ah, it's the quarantine flag, sir. Oh, and there's another signal tacked on. Well? Yellow fever, sir. Yellow fever? Give me that book. Yellow fever. Yellow fever? You shouldn't have come, sir. No, no. Don't come any closer. It's highly infectious. Are you seriously trying to tell me there really has been an outbreak of yellow fever here? It's at its peak, sir. The men are dropping like flies. Oh. There goes another one, sir. Permission to carry on, sir. By all means, Coxon. <laughs> Poor devil. Call out two men. You didn't even make sure he was dead. They always are, sir. We get used to it. Would you care to take your jacket oh. off, sir? It's suddenly become terribly hot. It must be 108 degrees in the shade. I say, Stanton, are you all right? Oh, yes, sir. I'm fine, sir. Of course, the trouble is, this climate is so treacherous. It's terribly cold now. Would you... Coleman. Would you care to come into my office and have a... Have a... Have, have a cup of something hot? No. No, no, thank you, Stanton. I think I must get back to the mainland. You need help, you know. No, no. Don't worry, sir. We can manage. Yes. Well, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> come on, Grant. You can come out now. You died like a hero. Go on back to the billet and get some dry clothes on. <laughs> it's no good. I can't do it. I just can't leave from there to rot. Turn around, Bates. We're going back to the island. Sir. Out of starboard, Coxon. Return to Boozy. Aye, aye, sir. Well, here's the old yellow fever. Cheers. <laughs> Fancy thunderguts falling for dear old half-baked plan B. You know, I'd never have believed it. <laughs> yes, darling. It just goes to prove that you're not the only fool in the Navy. Yes, it does, doesn't it? I say steady on.
Hey, you! Last one there's a rotten apple. Right. Hey! Hey! hey. Oh, well saved, sir. Jolly well held. Thank you. Oh, lummy. Under Mr. Potter, what is the meaning of this? Meaning of this, huh? Yes. Uh, uh, well said, sir. Uh, it, it's nice to see you again, sir. The meaning of this. Uh, 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 PT, sir. Uh, that's it. Yes, PT. Keeps fit, sir. Shakes off the old yellow fever. Uh, Fall is dark. Commander Stanton. Oh. You and every sailor on this island have made a complete fool of me. But now it's my turn. Yes, I was afraid it would be, sir. I intend to go through this establishment with a fine tooth comb and winkle out every single piece of underhanded skullduggery that's going on. And will you all be staying here quite some time then, sir? I may be, but I very much doubt if you will. Come on, we're going to make a thorough inspection of the whole place. As you wish, sir. And take that damn stupid hat off. Hmm? <laughs> Two, four, six. Just right. Gee. Yeah, what's this? What's Gee, the he's back. Yeah, good. Whoop, he's back. Well, Ovi. Don't get this lot out of sight. Where? I've just told you out of sight. Go on. Crack him. I'll get Ovi off. Now I want to see the store. Oh, naturally, sir. I'm sure you'll find everything in order. Oh, Ed Coxon, uh, uh, Captain Povey wants to see the stores. Yes, I'm uh, Well, uh, excuse me, uh, before you go to see the stores, perhaps you'd like to inspect... I told you I wanted to see the stores, and that's where I'm going, Commander. Inspection, sir. Very good. Where do you put it? In here, beside the boiler. The boiler? You steaming nitwit. What are you going to put it there for? Well, I... oh. everything's to your satisfaction, sir. So far, yes. But I have a feeling that something is going on and I'm getting warm. Something is, sir. <laughs> well, uh, shall we go now, sir? What is that? Uh, probably my, sir. I think it came from over there, actually, sir. Rubbish. It came from over here. This is on the ask, Commander. Well, this is jolly decent of you, old chap. Uh, parting is such sweet sorrow. But, uh, hey, Fred? Mm -hmm. I think he's rotten shame, sir. Yes, yeah, so do I. Just as I, I was getting the hang of those shoals, too, damn it. Oh, well. I'm not the only one. Cheer up, Peter. We'll be able to see each other now and then in London. I doubt it. Just wait till Mummy and Cynthia get hold of me. 
I shall be at dead dances and hunt balls that I haven't got a cha-cha-cha left in me. Oh, poor boy. What you must go through. I know. Life is hell, isn't it? Absolute hell. Oh. <laughs> oh, what's this? The last of our sir. I thought things, being as they are, you might be in the mood to sink it, sir. Oh, you might very well be right, Coxon. How much? No, sir. I couldn't. This is the one time I ain't got the art to take a profit, sir. Oh, well, in that case, you might as well take a seat, Chief. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Well, this is an occasion where rank must be overlooked. And, uh, not the wine. Certainly, sir. Far away. Right, I sir. Oh. <laughs> That's a good one, you see, sir. <laughs> there we are, sir. You know, sir, I'm going to, uh, well, at least, uh, me and the chap, sir, we're going to miss you. Well, oddly enough. And yet, I, I'm going to miss you, too. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, sir. Oh, Toast to Boonsy, the Capri of the English Channel. Here he is, sir. As to its hosp hospitable shores and its fish laden waters, to its good people whom we, in our rough sailor fashion, have loved just as they, in their way, have loved us. <laughs> I hope. It's a long, long way to Tipperary. Ah, British go on. British, go home. Blimey. A couple of branders and you think you own the island. Come on. You imperialist pick me like that, huh? Come on out of you here. You see what I've written? It's it for you. Argue. British, go. Yes, yeah, for you. you. Out of it. You're coming for along you. with me. You go. Come on, come go, quietly. Chief Petty Officer Banyard reporting for duty, sir. Well, you've seen his handiwork, I suppose. I have indeed, sir. And with all due respect, this time he's gone a bundle. But I don't remember nothing about it, sir. Oh, you never do. Uh, leading seaman, refresh Mr. Higgins' memory, will you? At 23, 40 hours last night, I came upon this gentleman, sir, painting on the wall outside and shouting. <coughs> What was he shouting? For 900 years, we have been enslaved by the British oppressors. Oppressors, isn't it? The time is right for us to rise and shake off the yoke of the imperialistic pigs. Boonsy demands home rule now. Anything to say, Gaston? It won't happen again, sir, I promise. I'm on the wagon front today, forever. Yes, well, I, I shan't prefer charges against you, providing that you remove all signs of the damage done in the customary manner. It will be a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Rule Britannia. Oh, thank you very much. And Rule Britannia. Uh, issue him with a pail and uh, mop, will you, as usual, Cotton? They're all ready for him, sir. A oh, good show. And paint somebody else's walls next time, Gaston, will you? There's a good chap. It will be... A a pleasure, sir. <laughs> Bad turn. Big march.
Oh, oh, very funny. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. A signal from Commander Standerton, sir. There's a revolution on Boomsy. Nothing. Revolution on Boomsy? This calls for immediate action. Mr. Vyse, old thunder. I mean, Captain Povey immediately. Oh, he's on a cycling tour in the New Forest. Left no address. We, we must do something, Mabel. How about the Admiralty, sir? How about... By Jove, yes. Why didn't I think of that? Yes, get this off at once. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. See and I here. Oh, School of Photography. I've been trying to get you chaps. I've got a signal here somewhere. I can't put my finger on it for the moment, but it's a copy of one to Portsmouth from Boonsey. They've got a revolution or something. Can you send a photographer over to cover it? Hmm? But you must have got somebody. All covering crafts. What the blazes are they? Oh. The Admiral's bloodhounds got a first. Oh, I see. <laughs> Tricky. <laughs> well, I've got to get a photographer from somewhere, even if it's only a bloke with a box brownie. Who do you suggest I try? The Marines. The Royal Marines are not flaming film stars, but we'll find a man for you. It's always a pleasure to help the Navy out of trouble. Very likely. Leave it to us. CNI. A panic about some tin pot revolution on some island called Boonsy. They want a photographer. But we don't have such persons. I know that, idiot. Can't miss this chance of getting the Navy out of the muck. Must be somebody in the corps who can take snaps. I know, sir. What about the chap who took that one? Lieutenant Binns, of course. The man's a menace, a disgrace, an idiot. He sees himself as one of those Fleet Street reporter wallers. We can certainly take a good likeness. It'll get him out of our lives for a while, too, sir. Splendid. We'll send bins. If that old thunder got, sir, we've had it. So say all of us. Sir, Royal Marines Press Section Naval Intelligence. Where's the action, sir? Look, if you're part of the Marine Landing Exercise, you're on the wrong island. It's typical of your crowd, of course. No, yes, sir, you've got a revolution on your hands, haven't you, sir? Now, how many rebels do you estimate you're up against, sir? Uh, how? How many would you say, number one? Oh, more than that, I'd say, sir. Five hundred? Six hundred? Well, uh... <laughs> Over a thousand ruthless terrorists. Uh, they have arms, of course. Oh, rather, yes. Two each. Two each. By Jove. Wait till the press type Fleet Street boys get hold of this. I'll be a hero. Excuse me, sir. Must get this dispatch off at once. Excuse me. What an extraordinary chap. Do you think he's real? Needs a shave, sir. I say, he's not serious about putting all that stuff in the newspapers, is he? I mean, Lummy, what will Portsmouth say? Island in revolt. Natives demanding home rule. Imperative all personnel... Remain to deal with situation. Oh, imperative it is. Mabel! Mabel! Sir? Give me Boonsy on the phone. Aye, aye, sir. I'll give him a revolution, all right. Oh, he's late. <laughs> ah. Yes? Hello? Hello, Santon. This is Captain Povey. What's all this rubbish about a revolt? We're under attack at the moment. Well, 
What the devil was that? Oh, it's nothing, sir. Just a, just a flesh wound. <laughs> It's nothing to worry about, sir. We're, we're holding out. Excuse me. Oh, got him. Now listen to me, Stanton, and listen carefully. I don't believe a word of it, you understand? So you can stop popping those paper bags as soon as you like. Got it? And furthermore, Stanton, you've got just three days to get off that island, or else. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye to you, sir. <laughs> what did he say, sir? Well, he's given us three days to get out, or else. Ah, oh, 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 shut up. This, Captain, is a copy of the signal originated by you, giving our men on Boonsie Island three days to get off and issued on the very day Commander Stanton informed you a revolution had broken out. How do you explain that? I... I didn't think it was important, sir. Heaven preserve! He didn't think it was important. Captain Povey, the Navy has long been famed for its obtuseness in political matters. But, damn it, man, this is rather ridiculous. Make a signal. Tell those chaps on Boonsie to hang on till they get direct instructions from me personally. Yes, sir. And Bobby. Yes, sir. No more reporters. Not even the Times. I want a strict control on all means of reaching the island. Ports, airfields, everything. Understand? Yes, sir. No more reporters. I'm just finished with that lot yet. <laughs> Nearly, Chiefy. Here, what's that? That Johnson is a Mongolian moonstone. Here, yeah, that's the ring the skipper lost in Hong Kong. It is not the ring that the skipper lost in Hong Kong. Well, if it's not, it's his twin. Now, get this straight, Johnson. All Mongolian moonstones are alike. Understand? Well, uh, everything okay, Coxon? Aye, aye, sir. All right, on your way, laughing. Aye, aye, Chiefie. Well, there you are. Hurry in there. There it is, sir. In all its pristine glory. Really? I say. I say. Tell me that story about it again, Coxon. <laughs> uh, the story? Hmm. Oh, yes, 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 of course, sir, the story. Well, sir, uh, I wouldn't like it to get around, but um, I had a relative in Hong Kong. Ah. Hmm. Oh, Peter, you shouldn't have. Oh, Peter, how sweet of you. Oh, it was nothing, dear. No, I know it's nothing, dear, but it's terribly sweet of you, just the same. By the way, what is it? Oh, it's a ring. Well, I know it isn't a canteen of cutlery. I mean the stone, dear. What sort of stone is it? Oh, the stone, yes. Well, that's a Mongolian moonstone. It's very rare, according to Chief Petty Officer Banyard. Oh. Chief Petty Officer Banyard. Give it back, Peter. You don't know where it's been. The Mongolians probably don't either. But, Heather, this was given to a relation of Banyard's for saving the Grand High Lama from the Tibetan goat. He should have settled for the goat. But, Heather, you don't seem to understand. This cost me a whole month's cigarette ration. Really? No, that idiot Binns has gone altogether too far. Have you seen this? What's that, sir? Mickelberg Brothers Portsmouth Sale, bargains in outsized corsets. No, 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 not that. Here, what? Tragedy of Boonsy by Trevor Binns. Oh, yes. Today a strange calm has descended on the strife-torn island of Boonsy. Nothing stirs. Yet to me, this calm is more ominous than the noise and the stench of battle. The unmistakable lull before the enemy launches an all-out attack. You see what I mean? Will he have to go? Can't you just order him back to the mainland, sir? Well, it can't be done, Heather. He's suspicious already. If I order him back, he'll know that we've fiddled the whole thing. The fellow's a damn nuisance. You know, every time I sneak out for a spot of fishing, there he is asking, where's the action? Sir, hmm? it's about Lieutenant Bim, sir. Something's got to be done. Well, we know, Chief, we know. Yes, but do you know what he's done now, sir? He's pinched the jeep. The Meltman's livid. Hmm? And, well, well, I mean, we need it, sir. What's he doing with it, Chief? Well, he's scouring round the island, sir. Looking for the rebel leader, General Gaston Higgins. He wants an interview, sir. Does he, by Joe? <laughs> oh, well, in that case, Coxon, I think uh, we might give him a hand, if you see what I mean. I think I've got your drift, sir. I'll lay it on right away, sir. <laughs> well, if actions he wants, well, action he's going to get. Oh. <laughs> it's Mongolian moonstone, isn't it? <laughs> I haven't seen one of those since Hong Kong. Ha, <laughs> ha,
It's a Gaston again. Patriot and liberator of Dunsey. You mustn't speak to me like that. I like you, and, and I like all of you, and I'm a loyal British subject. Of course you are. <laughs> to Gaston Higgins. Flaming patriot and liberator of Dunsey. Now, ladies, pay attention, please. I want you to think of yourself as gorillas. No, not the hairy sort. The other kind. Now, on the command shun, I want you to stand with both feet together, head well up, arms straight down by your sides, and thumbs in line with the seams of your trousers. Um, well, in your case, of course, thumbs in line with the seams of your, um, um, well, we scrub down that bit. We'll try without your trousers. I mean, we'll try without your thumbs. That, uh, cool. Uh, squad, squad, shun. Yeah, it's not quite right, but it's a start. Now, quite still, everywhere. Heads well up. Oh, Johnny, girl. Throw your chest out. Oh, well done, that girl. Now, I think I better take your names and your, um, your telephone numbers. Now, first one. Heather Stark, Boonsie 101. Heather Stark, Boonsie 101. Oh, I know somebody called Heather. Uh, oh. Well? No, not awfully. I was just trying to show these grillers how to show their chest size. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was trying to get her telephone number. Uh, he Heather, it's all for the cause. I know what it's all for. Bluebeard. <laughs> but Heather, darling, I'm doing this for us. <laughs> This is as far as I can take you. What happens now, sir? Well, uh, these gorillas will take you to their leader. That is, if you still want to take the risk. Well, sir, that's what I'm here for. Very well. Uh, I thought it might. Well, good luck, old man. <laughs> and goodbye. Thank you, sir. If I don't come back from this mission, thanks for everything, sir. <laughs> Where am I? You are here. Oh, good show. Who are you? I represent the press. I am unarmed. Uh, welcome to the cause. The world is waiting for your story, General. Oh. Ah. Oh. For 900 years, we have been enslaved by the British oppressors. Well, the time has come and is ripe for us to shake off the yoke of the imperialistic peaks. Boozy demands home rule. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, have you enough men to hold out, General? Huh? Hold out? Hold out? <laughs> The, the time, the time has come for the bourgeois to drive the British dogs into the sea. The hour is nigh for battle, and I, Gaston Higgins, will not rest till Boozy is free. Oh, here, I told you, you don't have done it. The leader is tired. The interview is at an end. Long live the leader. Long live the leader. For 900 years, we have been in... No, By Joe, what a story! And I demand that 
let this country send a gunboat with all possible speed to teach these impudent islanders a lesson they will never forget. Boonze must remain British. Alors, depuis des années, il y a eu des points de vue et des opinions contradictoires à ce qui concerne l'occupation de notre glorieuse Boonze. Mais maintenant, la France va se venger. Vive la France Vive la Boonze La Boonze appartient à la France Captain Purvey speaking. Admiral, sir. Yes, sir, I have. Yes, sir, at once, sir. Get Captain Purvey. He's waiting outside, sir. Don't want him outside. I want him in here. Aye, aye, sir. Now, Captain Purvey, sir. Now, Pervy, you got me into this, and you're ruddy well going to get me out of it. I don't care how you do it, but if you don't, I wouldn't give an ounce of shag for your chances of reaching retirement age. Now, get out! Yes, sir. And it is the Admiral's express wish that I take command and put a stop to this revolution nonsense at once. But Captain Povey, sir, I don't think you have any idea what you're taking on. I've seen this man, Higgins, and he's a born leader if ever I saw one. We are not Marines. It's time he realized he's got the Royal Navy to reckon with, and we are not keen on people who want to play soldiers. If it's action you want, it's action you'll get. Aye, aye, sir. Synchronize your watches, gentlemen. We shall attack tonight. I beg your pardon, sir. What with, sir? What with? Everything we've got, of course. Well, it's going to be a bit awkward, sir. Why? Well, they raided the armory last night, sir, and whipped off everything that goes bang, sir. I don't care if we've only got a pea shooter and one pea. We attack tonight. Coxswain, make all the necessary arrangements. Very good, sir. I'll have to go now, sir. It might take considerable time, sir. Oh. Come on, hurry up. That's it, break the glass. Oh, hold it, hold it. One, ten, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and twelve. Right. What will I do with them, Chiefy? Shove them in the arse and all. Oh, but... Get cracking. I'm cracking, then. What would you do with a drip like that? <laughs> Thank you, Rosa. You're welcome. Hmm? You're always welcome. Not now, darling. I got to date. What? With a pint. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh just a minute. There we go. <laughs> now, look. This is the form. We attack the calf tonight. You let off some of those dummies I gave you until I wave me handkerchief. Then you scarper out the back and hide in the eels. Got it. Maybe oui. uh, when you wave your handkerchief, we uh, scupper. That's all. Ah. Go away. But you don't understand, Heather. There isn't much time left. I have news for you. There's none. But you don't seem to appreciate, Heather. In a few minutes' time, I shall be out there in the night, facing the enemy. I've put a light in the window. Well, that's very nice of you, Heather. I do appreciate that. What for? Oh. And stop following me about, clank body. Oh, very well. But this may be the last time you'll hear me clank. Uh, uh, hear me talk. Oh, Peter, don't be so ridiculous. I'm just facing reality, that's all. In a few minutes' time, I shall be out there. And who knows, I may never come back. Now, Peter, don't be so silly. Of course you'll come back. It's all in the lap of the gods, you know. This may be the last time I stand here looking at you like this. If those devils out there get me, I'd like to go, knowing I've been forgiven. Peter, of course I forgive you. Heather, my darling. Oh, darling, I really don't know what would happen if you didn't come back. 
what am I doing? You must be absolutely raving mad. You're not going into a real battle at all. It's just a great big hoax. You tricked me into making it up with you. You're nothing but a confidence man. You're not going to get hurt at all. Yes, but I might get hurt, Heather. You never know. I mean, after all, I, 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 I might... Uh, it's very dark, you know, out there. I might trip over something or bump my head on the wall or I might even catch my death of cold. <laughs> oh, Peter, you know, you really are absolutely priceless. Yes, I know I am, but am I forgiven? Oh, darling, of course you're forgiven. I say. I say, I mean... Oh, oh, lummy. All right, straighten up. Fags out. Now you all know the drill. When we reach our objective, you fire a few shots at random. At random. Understand? If anybody hits anybody, they'll be put on a charge. Now, as you told them, we'll all be home by supper. Cavey, Chief, oh, Thunderguts is oh, coming. Thanks for the tip, sir. Squad. Squad! All right, Sanity is Coxon. Squad, squad, stand that! Hey! Men, in a few moments you'll be going into battle against one of the most ruthless and bloodthirsty enemies our country has ever faced, Gaston Higgins. Why don't he go home? Oh, give him a chance. Silence in the ranks! I won't mince matters, men. We're hopelessly outnumbered. But I happen to think that we in the Royal Navy thrive on such odds. And so I say to you now... I think we'd better go on, sir. What? I think we'd better go on. Oh. Oh, very well. Good luck, men. Let's show them what the Navy's made of. Squad! Squad! Tap! Into file! Right! Ten! Arms at the short trial! Double! March! Left, right, 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 left, right. You're a bit late for the parade, sir. Left, right, 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 left, right. It's too quiet. I don't like it. Oh, really? I thought it was rather pleasant, sort of peaceful. It reminds me very much of a place in Devon I used to go to when I was a small boy. Oh. Oh, sorry, sir. You stay here. I'm going on to see what I can find out. Oh, Gaston, dead on time. All right, men, open, fire. Oh, boys, oh, boys. Gaston, can't oh, we stop? We will get into terrible trouble. Keep firing or you will be the first to die. Huh? Oh. What's the matter with him? Can't he see us? Oh, cool. Line. What's he doing? These are live bullets he's firing. He's down for Gloucester, sir. He's gone and got pickled. I know right to let him loose in France. Please. Oh, somebody ought to keep me. Somebody will, Coxon. Somebody will. Keep down, chaps. No sense in taking any risks. Uh, long live the revolution. Arm rule for Bunzi. Long live the revolution! Death to the imperialistic dogs! Ah. Stanton, I'm going in there. Oh, sir. Do you think you should? There's no other way. I'm going to get Higgins myself. Gosh, this is terrific stuff. I say, sir, if they get hold of Higgins before we do, we've had it. <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, what? Any suggestions? Suggestions? I'll give it some serious thought, sir. There's only one thing to do, sir. We've got to get there first. Very well, Chief. Lead on. After you, sir. Huh? Oh, all right. Follow me. He should be in a fool. All right, now. Drop your arms. Come on, drop them. 
Mm. Disarm! It was all his idea, Commander. He made us do it. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Shame on you, Gaston. Yes, shame on you. Didn't I tell you that when I waved my handkerchief, you were to stop? Jolly dangerous, too. All that firing. Somebody might have got hurt. Not only that, if old Thunderguts got here before we did, the cat would have been well and truly among the jolly old pigeons. No, no, it? it wouldn't. Well, that reminds me. Where is that blooming menace? Peepo, Commander. Peepo? Lummy. Well, that's our flipping lot. <laughs> Gentlemen, it is my considered opinion that my report will keep the Admiralty in court martials for a year. I get the impression that that report will make war and peace look like a telephone message. Very probably. It seems a shame to give you all this trouble, sir. Why not scrub round it? Scrub round it? Stanton, get him out of here, quick. Certainly, sir. This way, chatterbox. Oh, what have I said, sir? And keep that idiot out of here. Aye, aye, sir. You know his trouble, sir. He's touchy. No dice, sir. Court martials all round. Oh, what a shame. I try my best to talk him out of it. Wait until you see these. How about that for composition, sir? And what about that for action? Oh, yes, I, I rather do like this one. Uh, what about you, Chief? Indeed I do, sir. <laughs> that has great possibilities, sir. You're right. I'll have that on the front page of every newspaper in the country in the morning. I'd better show it to the captain at once, sir. No, no, Mr. Binns. I'd like to give it to myself. I gather that number one and the coxswain have a little something they want to tell you. Something you want to tell me? Yes, sir. Would you uh, like to sit down, sir? I'm afraid this may come as a bit of a shock. Shock? What do you want now, Stanton? I've got my report to do. Well, excuse me, sir. I felt you'd like to see this immediately. Hmm. An excellent likeness. This chap Binns obviously knows his stuff. Yes, quite so. Yes, yes. I understand that uh, he selected this particular masterpiece for the front page of all tomorrow's newspapers. Has he? That's very shrewd of him. I must get a cop. He what? Well, it's impossible he can't print this. I'm afraid he can, sir. I gather that the caption is to be, uh, Gallant Captain leaves the attack on a stupendous hoax. <laughs> but he mustn't do it. It's got to be stopped. Well, well uh, would that be wise, sir? Gagging naval intelligence? I mean, if the papers get hold of that, they'd be jolly peeved. I mean, Navy uh, denies freedom of the press and that sort of thing. Well, that would look bad. Well, something's got to be done about it. If he prints that photograph, I shall be the laughing stock of the whole Navy for years. Mm, well, there, there is one way out that occurs to me, sir. What? Now, if you by any chance should forget to put in that report, then nobody would know that the revolution was a <laughs> misunderstanding. Forget it? I can't. And then, of course, if uh, that picture is printed, I can't see how your promotion could possibly be delayed. I imagine the nation would clamor for the immediate recognition of the officer who... Uh... Stanton, this is nothing more nor less than blackmail. Yes, yes, yes. I'm rather good at it. <laughs> well, uh, you, sir, or shall I? How's he taken it, Chief? Like a Marine, sir. Like a Marine that's been hit by a bus. I'm afraid Binns is a has-been, sir. I'll be back on launchings, weddings and, and Sea Scout sports meetings before you can say, what's the birdie? No, no, not necessarily. I've just come to a little arrangement with Captain Povey. Oh, well done, sir. You've shot him? Not quite. But I gather for certain reasons of his own, he won't be making that report after all. Oh, lovely grub, sir, lovely. <laughs> then I take it, sir, that unless Mr. Bims discloses that this was a little joke, nobody will say anything about it, sir. Is this true, sir? I can promise you that nobody will say anything. 
<laughs> Unless you do. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No, well, uh, Captain Povey will be leaving shortly. Uh, so if you hurry up and pack, you'll catch the tide. Uh, tide? Tide, uh, sir? Oh, yes. Well, uh, if you'll excuse me, sir, if you don't want me any more, I'll uh, take a little stroll. <laughs> Down by Smuggler's Cove, Chief. Yes, sir. Well, uh, uh, better see our visitors off, I, I presume, uh, Mr. Potter. Aye, aye, sir. And uh, you'll know where to find me after that. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, don't forget your bait. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, penny form. I was just thinking. Yeah. Poor Cynthia. She'll have to do without your cha-cha-cha. I say some of the mine. Save your film, Lieutenant Bins. It's only Bessie. B -b Bessie, sir? Cotton, get right close into that thing and give it a good whack. Ah, uh, sir. I say, look here, Bins. Yes, sir? About this rather unfortunate business on Bunze. I do hope I can count on your discretion. I mean, there's no point in everybody knowing that I'd be made to look rather a... A, a, a clot, sir? After all, a lot of people try to make much of a rivalry between our two services, but after all, we are both officers, aren't we? And gentlemen, of course. And whatever our personal feelings may be, we are both in the same boat, aren't we? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and we must sink or swim together. I agree, sir. Sink or swim together. Thank you, Bins. <laughs>